38. Turning 38. I got ID'd at the liquor store this weekend and I'm like, it's, I, it's, it's obviously going to be the last time. That's never going to happen again. I had a mask on. So I'm like, mm, I was wearing a crop top and buying sourpuss. So I feel like that's probably why I got ID'd. Um, it's like breastfeeding. You don't always know when it's the last time and you wish you would have known. It's like getting ID'd at the liquor store. It's the same thing. Um, okay. I promised you 20 minutes and I'm so off track. So I'm turning 38. Um, I am going to go back to when I was a child. So I remember probably like preteen, probably like 12. I remember hiding food from my parents. I remember eating food, hiding from my parents. I remember going to the store and buying food and eating way past hunger. Um, I remember babysitting and the people I babysat for, they had like a junk food cupboard and I would completely overeat in the junk food cupboard. So really basically since I can remember, I, I did, I had food issues. I, I, I struggled with food. Um, in a te when I was a teen, I, in uh, middle school, high school, I was very active, played tons of sports. Um, I was never super comfortable in my body, but I think because I was so active, I, I wasn't really overweight then. I don't really remember. High school, I remember hating my body. When I look back at my prom photos, I was teeny weeny with the most perfect perky breasts. Why couldn't I just appreciate those breasts at, at 17? Anyway, um, but I remember doing all kinds of ridiculous things. I remember doing a popsicle diet. Me and my friend uh, laid by her pool all summer and ate popsicles. Super healthy. Um, so I remember trying to lose weight since high school. Uh, when I went to university, um, I, I didn't really fit in. And I'd never been very girly and I hung out with a bunch of boys and I didn't try to be pretty because I didn't feel worthy of it. And I am like a super overachieving firstborn child where as soon as I tackle something, I will achieve it. And I felt like if I tried to look nice, it would bring attention to me that I was trying, but I hadn't really achieved it yet. So I didn't want the attention. So... I like didn't wear makeup in, in university. I went to like the bar with a two gone. So there was something kind of going on there. Um, then my job in the summer when I was uh, in university, I started going to a summer camp. So this summer camp has chicken nuggets on tap. Okay. Tater tots, sausages, homemade chocolate chip cookies. So um, I would overeat. I would gain probably 20 pounds every summer. I would struggle every summer. I went there for 11 years. I would, um, I would leave camp, feel horrible about myself. I just remember that feeling of feeling so trapped in my body and so stuffed. And I would lose some, probably not all. I'd vow to not do it again that summer. And then I would, and I was going to be, oh, I was going to eat cottage cheese and go for runs. And it just didn't work. So I would gain it back. Okay. Um, I actually met my husband there um, and I ended up moving to England when I got my first teaching job. I was living by myself while I had a roommate and I remember binging on food. So I remember um, like buying a pizza, bringing home, eating the whole thing. Um, I remember not having a healthy relationship with food and really struggling with having that freedom that I was like an adult and I didn't have anyone like watching me. Um, we went to Australia. We lived in Australia together and I lost weight. I was being really active and then we went back to camp and I gained it. So the majority of my life between like 20 and 28, I was losing and gaining the same 40 pounds, 20, 30, 40, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, never happy, constantly trying to lose weight. We moved home. We decided to get married. Well, then went the, I lost a ton of weight for my wedding. I probably lost 50 pounds for my wedding in the most unsustainable way possible. I weighed that weight. I'm actually about 20 pounds less now than I was on my wedding day. Um, but I was that weight on my wedding day for four minutes um, because I was being ridiculous. I was over exercising. I was restricting my food. I was chasing a number on the scale and not the lifestyle. I was losing weight for an event, one event. 
uh, and it, it, it wasn't serving me. Okay. I actually remember going to the gym. So Neil and I went to the gym together. He, I, that's how I knew he really loved me. Um, because he is not super into the gym and, uh, you used to have to, to hear the TV, you'd have to like be on the machine and I would watch Neil and he would pedal just fast enough to make it so that he could hear the TV. And uh, meanwhile, I'm like on oh, the stepper. I wouldn't leave the gym until I'd burn a thousand calories. It wasn't healthy. Okay, so next up, I married. I gained 20 pounds like the day of my wedding. Um, and when we got back from uh, we got back from the wedding, we found out that Neil had cancer again, and um, that started our journey with infertility. So I told you guys, I'm telling you all my secrets, and uh, you know, part of this, I'm like, why is this relevant? And you know what, every like every piece of this is relevant because this is part of my story and we all have our own story and I'm just telling you mine so that you can see, see yours and see yours, see the start of yours. Um, so infertility was probably one of the hardest things I ever had to go through. And I, um, you know, I, I feel for anyone that is going through that or has ever had to go through that. Um, and I used food to numb my emotions. Like it was a roller coaster ride of like, am I pregnant? Nope, not pregnant. Eat my emotions. Okay. And then be really healthy. And I felt the pressure to be healthier because I knew the healthier it was, the better the chance I was going to be pregnant. And it was just so much pressure. Um, and it was a really hard time in my life. And I was certainly using food to numb my emotions. Um, so I, um, got pregnant with help, we have fertility treatments. And I was probably about 250 pounds the day I gave birth to Alfie. So I'm about 160 right now. So I was I was about 90 pounds more than I am right now. Um, and Alfie arrives and he is everything I ever wanted in my life. Uh, you know, we had wanted him for a really long time. Um, I actually had complications at delivery where I lost a ton of blood, so I had no energy. Um, so I would just like sit with him all day and I was breastfeeding and we didn't have any family around. My parents were in Fredericton. They were still working. Neil's parents lived in England. So I really started off my life as a mother, um, with, with just, it just being me because I was breastfeeding. Neil couldn't take care of him. Um, because I was so weak, I would just sit with him because we didn't have family. I wasn't used to giving him to anyone. And I just like, I started off my life as a mother super intense. And I think it was all of those things. It was because I wanted him so much. It was because I was breastfeeding. It was because I didn't have family and I never had given him to other people. And so I started my life as a mom in a way where I felt like the, he needed me every second of every day. And it was my job to be there in that moment. Um, so fast forward, not very long and I get pregnant again. I mean, you say accident, but like, we all know how pregnancy happens, but we just weren't preventing pregnancy. We never thought we'd get pregnant uh, um, by accident. Anyway, so much extra information, but I'm just going for it. Um, I had stopped breastfeeding and the next month got pregnant with twins. So Alfie was one when I got pregnant with the twins. Um, so anyway, the twins come along and um, now I'm a mom of three. So I have infants and a two-year-old. I somehow survived that. And, and the twins are one now. And I'm going back to work. So I've been to back to work for a couple months. And I start to think about me. And I realize I look at myself in the mirror. And I don't recognize myself anymore. And not just the physical. I, me. I, I had lost myself in motherhood. Um, and I see this happening all the time. I think it's very common. I, I, I lost myself in motherhood. Um, but I like, I, I knew deep down that I had more to offer. And I knew that I was not living my best life. I knew that I could be a better mom. I knew that there was more out there for me. I knew um, and I knew that no one was going to do it for me. Like, no, like Neil wasn't going to say, okay, babe, I'll take all three of the basically babies that we have and you go to the gym. Like 
that was a really hard time in our life and a hard time in our relationship because it was all hands on deck. Again, our family's not really around. We have three little kids. We were both working full time. Uh, it was exhausting. It is a miracle we all survived that. At this time too, I must mention, I'm still breastfeeding, okay? But I decide it's time. So in a very cliche way, um, it's January 1st, 2016. And I'm like, this was it. This is it. This is my time. I have tried to do this. I've been at this for 10 years now. This is it this time. I'm going to do this. It's going to be different this time. So this is what I committed to. Okay. I committed to no timeline. No timeline. I committed to no timeline. I wasn't going to lose 20 pounds in the month of January. I wasn't going to lose 50 pounds that year. I was just going to do it and I wasn't going to stop. So I committed to not quitting. I committed to creating a life for myself, a better life for myself and my family. I, cre I committed to creating habits. I committed to changing my mindset. I committed to changing the way that I thought about my life and, and the cards that I'm dealt and my environment and what I have in front of me that day. And that, that year wasn't perfect. I wasn't this epic rock star the entire time, but I lost 50 pounds that year. And in true Alicia fashion, I didn't even really give myself very much credit. And now like 50 pounds in a year is epic but I didn't feel like I was that great very hard on myself um and at, at that year Jose and I are teachers together at Review High and that year Jose decides to lose her last 20. She had been maintaining a very healthy weight for like 10 15 years and she was like do you know what I want more I want more I'm gonna lose my last 20. So she last lost her last 20 when I lost my 50 and we just talked about weight loss all day every day and she said to me like your mind is amazing like I think you could be a your way weight loss leader. So January 2017 I opened up the Riverview location um your weight loss and uh, I've been doing that ever since and then we started online in May and then you know everything happened with us um, I lost another 20 pounds that next year to get to my 70 pounds and I've been maintaining that weight um, for the last how many ever years that is should be better at math but um, so here's the thing why am I telling you all of this I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I've been there, that I've been there and that it's hard and that I'm here and it's hard, but this hard is a lot more fun. And I remember when I started my journey, I remember working out in my basement and being so discouraged. I remember the first, when I, when I was getting dressed in the morning and my husband would be like, that outfit's fine. And I'm like, it's not fine and I was like sweating and then I remember when it wasn't terrible to get dressed and I remember when I could wear a skirt without my thighs chafing and I remember when I could get in a bathing suit in front of people I remember when I started to get more energy I remember when someone start no started noticing that someone said to me oh my gosh you've lost weight that feeling every single person on this earth deserves that feeling and i hope that i never forget what that felt like when i first started to actually feel comfortable in my skin and this is about so much more than weight loss because i realized i could do anything i wanted to do in that moment and i literally felt unstoppable and um I truly believe that every, I mean, person, but I just obviously I'm speaking more to women right now. Every woman deserves to go through their everyday life feeling that way. And that didn't come from a number on the scale. That came from me living my best life. Thank you guys. I'm going to try not to cry through the whole rest thing. 
Um, okay, so now here we are. Here's my life now. And there's pieces of my life now that I want to share with you guys. Um, because I don't, yeah. Thank you, you guys. Okay. So my life now, okay. What makes up my life now? I'm a mom. And man, I'm going to say I'm a good mom. I love being a mom. I was born to be a mom. I was born to, I was such a good pregnant lady. I was a, such a good pregnant uh, pusher outer birther lady, such a good breastfeeder. I was born to be a mom. And um, I had so much mom guilt when I started this journey. That was one of my biggest obstacles, but I had to push through that. And um, now I'm showing my kids that it's okay to take time for yourself. And I hope that my daughters grow up to do the same thing. That's what I don't, isn't that what you want for your daughters? Do you want your daughters to take care of themselves to be, to, or to be completely selfless and give all of themselves to their children? You know, I see it. I see burnt out moms that are absolutely exhausted and overwhelmed and, and, um, they just give, 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 give to their kids, to their husband, to their jobs, to other people. And I'm like, you have to stop. Like, there's a reason why you need to put your own mask on first. And it seems selfish and it seems like there's no time for me, but you have to come first. And so I hope I'm teaching my daughters that they, that they need to prioritize themselves. And I'm teaching my son that if he chooses to marry a woman, that, that she should do the same or a partner or whatever. Um, I'm so damn proud that my kids eat healthy. They also eat bad food. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, but they like salad. Um, they eat every food. They drink water. They appreciate, they see movement as, because it's good for you. Um, and that just makes me so proud. So that's a big part of who I am. A big part of who I am is a mother. Um, and... I, I balance my kids' needs with my own. And being a parent is a spectrum. Here's your kids' needs and here's your needs. And some parents are really far this way and some parents are really far this way. And you have to find where what feels right for you, okay? Um, okay, next up, I'm a wife. So I've been married for 10 years. Um, those of you who know Neil know that he is a very special human. Uh, you can't really describe how amazing Neil is until you actually meet him. And um, he was not, and the reason why I'm talking about Neil is because I think it's important that I just talk about that he was not on this journey with me. He was doing his thing. Um, probably like gaining a bit of weight, maybe not being super healthy. Um, but do you know what? That wasn't his responsibility to facilitate my goals. That was my responsibility to facilitate my goals. We were on separate journeys. And I just want everyone to know that, um, that if your husband isn't on board or your partner or your parents or your kids, your adult kids, that doesn't have to stop you from being successful. Yes, it's an obstacle, but we have all kinds of strategies that can help you overcome that. So don't think that I've lost weight because I came in this perfect life and my husband just like did whatever and never ate chips on the couch. That's not the reality of my life. Um, okay, friends. This is a big part about who I am. Do you know what fills my bucket right to the top? My friends. And man, I feel, there's not much in my life I feel lucky for because I think we create our own life. But oof, I'm lucky I ended up in Riverview. Uh, we're not from here. I'm from Fredericton. Neil's from England. When we decided to come home, I said, let's go back to New Brunswick. I just happened to get a job in Riverview. I'd never been to Riverview. We moved here with a backpack and a car I'd bought on the internet. And Neil had no status in the country. And um, we just have this amazing group of friends. And we actually had a party this weekend. And I was standing in my kitchen looking at all these humans. And I was like, oh, my bucket is full. And the reason why I'm telling you this is I go out and spend time with my friends. I go out to eat. I drink beer. I eat nachos. And I go camping. And why am I telling you this? If I was trying to do a plan that would prevent me from doing any of those things, that wouldn't work in my life. 
So I realized that I needed to find a way to lose weight that aligned with my values and spending quality time with my friends and not feeling panicked about going out to supper is important to me. So that's why I had to find a way to do this in a way that felt real in my life. Almost done, guys. I, I said I do 20 minutes. I think I'm a little bit over, but I got this. Um, my next up is chocolate wine and coffee. Um, why am I telling you how much I love chocolate wine and coffee? Again, uh, every other time I tried to lose weight in the past, it's because it was a diet. And I was it was a failed attempt because it was a diet. And the only way that diet worked is if it was like the perfect conditions where there were no celebrations, there was no holidays, my husband was on board, and blah, blah, blah. And that's not reality. Like reality is I'm drinking coffee, wine, and chocolate. Just telling you that. Um, okay, the very last piece is um, the most current part of my journey. Um, I'm obviously near the end of my journey. I am trying to lose um, a little bit more weight, but more what I'm putting ahead of that is actually accepting um, my post weight loss body. So I've lost 70 pounds. I've had three kids. Neil says that they ate my breasts. So my breasts are a little bit like my daughters asked me the other day where they used to be. Um, so I have stuff. I have stretch marks. I have loose skin. I have cellulite. I have stuff. And I actually had uh, a tummy tuck uh, planned for April, but it got canceled because of COVID. COVID gave me perspective. COVID made me think that I have more work to do on loving myself where I am right now before I start to look externally. Because there will always be something I don't like about my body. So my current and everyone will always have things that they don't love about their bodies. Like that is just the reality, I'm sorry. So a big part of the Be Your Best program and like for me, how being my best in 2020 is accepting myself right now and being proud of where I am and feeling confident and loving myself as I am now. Um, so that is like the cheesy part of what I'm on right now, my personal part, but I wanted to just share that with you guys because that's a big part of where I'm going right now and where the Your Way Weight Loss is going right now. Um, Jose kind of went on that same journey herself earlier this year. And uh, do you know what she got out of that? Do you know what she got out of self-acceptance? Pure happiness. I have never seen a human more happy than I saw her the last couple of months. And it was a beautiful thing to watch. And it wasn't because she finally achieved her perfect body. It's because she accepted that she was enough. And we got talking and I'm like, man, we need to share this with the world. Like we need to make this a part of this program. We need to make women feel empowered and beautiful and we need to make them want to change and be better out of love for themselves and not out of hate so if you're thinking of making a change right now i don't want you to make a change because you hate your body so much that you want to i want you to try and make a change out of love you love yourself enough to try and be better there was a lot of love during that live, guys. I knew it was going to be a good one. I like felt it in my heart. Um, I don't know if I've ever told my whole story like that before. I feel like I should record this. I don't even know how. Um, thank you so much for everyone that tuned in. Um, I hope that that really helps you realize where I've come from and where I'm going and uh, just a little piece of my story. So uh, I really appreciate that. Oh, you guys. Okay, have a great night. Like, I could stay on all night, but uh, I'm going to cry a little bit more. Oh, thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate all of uh, the love and uh, support. Like, how lucky am I that this is my job? I get to do this for a job. I get to help other women um, feel this way. Pretty amazing. Okay, love you guys. Bye.